Arun, Arun, Arpit, and Upasana from their team who will be sharing their insights on their open budget platform and also walk you through how they can help nonprofits manage and organize data. A big thank you to the Civic Data Labs team from all of us. Just a few simple instructions before we begin. Um, the session is being recorded. We will make the video available on our YouTube channel for you to share with folks who will be interested to know more and for people from your organizations who missed the session. Please keep your devices on mute and use the Meet chat box to ping us anytime during the course of the session with your questions or comments or clarifications. We'll try and address them as we break during various segments. That's it from me. Thank you once again. Over to you, Gaurav and team. I think got a job, we'll just wait for a minute. Hey, Gaurav, we are good to start. Great. Uh, Sister Santa, is everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, joining us in this wonderful session. Uh, what we're trying to do today is to understand uh, how we can get some fiscal capacity, some understanding of budget and uh, spending data of uh, government uh, across different tiers and how we can use that understanding in respective work we do it be it uh, be it related to children well-being in the country be it related to women rights be it related to land rights uh, everywhere this knowledge could be uh, utilized in one way or the other so before we progress just a very quick introduction of civic data lab so Civic Data Lab is a small research organization focused to use uh, data, tech, design, and social science to strengthen the course of civic engagements in the country. Uh, what do you mean? What do we mean by civic engagements? Is basically two key aspects. One, uh, enabling citizens to have better access to public information, and once citizens have that, the second aspect is how we can meaningfully participate. In, in the local governance or, or on the regional or the national governance of things. How we can basically uh, have a better dialogue with our elected representatives on the kind of things uh, uh, they are doing on, on our behalf. So that's the two main goals of civic engagements we follow uh, at CDL. Uh, how we do that? We use a lot of open source technology, open data to, uh, to enable things with public reforms. And uh, to do so, uh, we do grow capacity, data and technology capacity of our partners, which is governments, nonprofits like queues, think tanks, media houses, and more, so that they can also do decision making at scale with the help of data. So that's a short introduction about us. We have a very small team. Uh, the team is now growing. We have close to uh, 16 members in the team. Uh, you would interact some of, with some of them today. And, uh, and and you would get to know more about them as we progress in the session. Next up is uh, how we work. So these are the kind of basic values we follow. Most of the work we do is open. So be it the data work we do, it would be available as open data for anyone to use, reuse for multiple purposes. Be it the technology work we do, it would be available as open source code for any other technology organization to reuse. All our research also remains open. All our designs also remain open. So openness is very key value of the work uh, we have. Uh, second one is all the nature of our work is collaborative and co-creative. So we spend a lot of time with our partners to understand their problems. Uh, we spend a lot of time with different stakeholders to see how we can make sure everyone has an important role to play in 
using these elements to strengthen civic engagements. Uh, of course, we can't do it alone, so we need help from each and every person involved in this space to make things better. Uh, third one is we rely on a lot of multiple stakeholder partnerships, uh, be, it, be it with the government, be it with the organizations on ground, be it media houses, be it research organizations and so on. So it's very multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary in nature. We establish feedback loops. Uh, it's essential for us to take continuous feedback ourselves and continuous uh, and give continuous feedback wherever possible so that these systems become better. And lastly, whatever we do, uh, it, it has a very important role of community to play in. And that's where we invest a lot of time on community engagement and events like these to interact with uh, partners like you. So yeah, your commitment to grow open data ecosystem in the country. And uh, that's the kind of thing which drives us. In today's uh, workshop, we are going to help you walk through some of the work we have done in the public finance space, uh, especially to strengthen the fiscal data ecosystem in the country. And what all it entails, I would now ask my colleague Arpit to come in and explain that, uh, that part of the journey um, in, in this discussion. So Arpit, over to you. Thanks a lot, Gaurav. Hello, folks. This is Arpit. Uh, so like Gaurav mentioned, we started the public finance team uh, with the objective to strengthen the fiscal data ecosystem in the country. Um, I believe we have a lot of uh, CSOs participating in the session today. I would like all of you to think for a second that whichever sector you're working in, which, who is the biggest financial contributor to that sector, if you would like to think for. Um, I would argue in almost all your cases, it will be the wrong. Uh, it's the government who invests the most in any sector and tries to ensure like the sector and the development of the sector moves forward. And so, uh, whenever you are trying to work in a sector and trying to solve for the challenges of the sector, uh, we like to look towards the government and the kind of work that they are doing. And you could be from any sector uh, and trying to answer questions. You could be from the education sector trying to understand the uh, budget allocation in your district for primary education. You could be a work, uh, women's safety organization is trying to understand how the Nervia fund is being utilized in your area. You could Right now we are facing a pandemic and you're wondering what has been our country's fiscal response towards the pandemic. So, and one question to, one good way to look at all these questions is understanding where the money is going. Because where there is money, there will be efforts to tackle that issue that you are working with. Uh, so, how do we find out, how do we find out what the government's intention is and what do we want to, to spend money on? Uh, do we look at their political manifestos? So every time before the election, they come up with manifestos talking about their intentions, about the kind of things that they want to do, things they want to invest in, uh, and what they want to do over their term. Uh, sure, it gives a quick insight, but it doesn't really let you dive deep in. Uh, do you then do you listen to the budget speeches? Budget speeches are long documents. Uh, you can check one at the link which I've mentioned below, uh, and trying to decipher all the information that you need for a particular sector and your particular area becomes a very, very challenging task. It becomes even more challenging when there is 150 plus different kind of budget documents and formats that come out with every budget speech every year in February. Like how do you parse all that information and understand what exactly you need to know? And uh, so uh, international budget, part budget partnerships uh, Every two years, there's a survey on the uh, uh, open budget survey across uh, numerous countries every two years. And uh, and they do it every two years. And in the 2019 survey, uh, India scored the following on transparency, we scored 49 out of 100. On public participation, we scored an 11 out of 100. Uh, on budget oversight, we scored a 59 out of 100. The most shocking thing was that uh, in terms of transparency of our budget process, India ranked 53 out of 117 countries. That's somewhere right in the middle. Uh, so, and if you look at it, that's why you can argue that the public participation score is so low for us. And we are left right where we started. We had these questions, but we still didn't get these answers, to, any answers to these questions. 
and how do we answer these better? And what we are trying to do at Civic Data Lab is, like Gaurav mentioned, build an open, open data ecosystem that can help foster all these uh, questions that you have and help you answer those. And the work that we have done in public finance, I will let Arun now take over and talk about some of these. Uh, thank you, Arpit. Uh, can I share my screen? Go ahead, Arun, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Arun. So, as Arpit said, um, governments make promises that, okay, we will do X, Y, Z. But then, where is the money coming from and where is it going? We can find them out from budget documents. So every year, during the budget speech, ministers make promises. Uh, and some promises seem to be a bit uh, too good to be true, uh, especially in terms of how much money can be spent on that particular issue. So it is important that we go back and check if there has been enough money allocated for a particular purpose. Now, let's understand how to read budget documents. Uh, I apologize at the beginning itself, this is going to get it slightly technical, but I will try to explain only the most important point so that it becomes easier for you to go back and check um, budget documents at your own time and then try to read and understand them. Yeah. So, what's the information available in budget documents? And that depends on what level of government are you looking at. Are you looking at union budget, which deals with central government, or are you looking at state budget? So, every state has its own budget. Or are you looking at municipal corporation budgets? Because after the Panchayati Raj reforms, the 73rd and 34th amendments to the constitution. We have the three tier system of government, uh, governments at the local level. So, what you are searching for may not be available in all the documents. For example, if you are looking at how much money is being spent or allocated for relaying of the roads, in a city, that could be under the municipal corporation budget. The roads outside of municipal boundaries may be in the state budget. The national highways will be under the union budget. So it is important that we understand what particular area are we going to look for and identify the government that is responsible for that particular spending. So, what's the information available in budget documents? Essentially, it is income and spending, receipts and expenditure. How much money is coming in and what are all the sources of the income? And how it is being spent? So, these are the two major broad information that's available in a budget document. Income and spending. And we all know that income for government comes through taxes, be it direct taxes or indirect taxes like GST, or it could be by borrowing. So because of the COVID-19 pandemic, government is looking to borrow a lot of money to plug the gap between expenditure and the income. This is the illustration of a budget document of what are the different figures available. In the budget document 2020-21, which is the ongoing financial year, we have the data on the actual amount spent by the government in 2018-19. So that is 23.2 lakh crores. 
we also have the 2019-20 budget estimate. So this is the expected expenditure in 2019-20 presented during the budget. So the government expected that in 2019-20 they will spend 27.8 lakh crores. But by the time it was September, ministries and the government realized that one, they are not going to get as much income as they expected in the budget estimate. And because of that, they will not be able to spend as much as they expect. So in September, they come out with the revised estimates of that year. And finally, we also have the budget estimate for the upcoming year. So in 2020-21, when Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman presented her budget in February of this year, she expected that the income of the central government will be 30.4 lakh crore and the spending will be identical, 30.4 lakh crore. Now, there might be a question here, why is total receipts equal to total expenditure? What is happening here is, government has a lot of priority. They estimate that, okay, we have to spend 30.4 lakh crores, but our income through taxes and other non-tax revenue is only, let's say, 28 lakh crores. The rest of the money, which is roughly 2.4 lakh crores, is met through borrowing by government taking loans. So the total income or total receipts is the revenue of the government plus the taxes. So by convention, always the income and the expenditure matches. Okay? Now, here things are going to get a slightly bit complicated, but it's quite easy. There are two types of receipts and expenditure. It's called revenue and capital. And I'll explain it right now. Revenue receipts are anything that comes on a regular basis, like taxes, service charge, etc. If you go to a government office, pay the money to get a service, that is a revenue receipt for the government. Okay? What is revenue expenditure? Things like regular expenditure, salary, maintenance charges, etc. So, revenue receipts and revenue expenditure are both regular uh, income and expenditure that uh, comes to the government and that goes out of the government. What's the next type? It's called capital receipts and capital expenditure. Capital receipts are income that is derived from loans, borrowing. And capital expenditure, obviously, is the loan repayment and expenditure on assets. When I mean what I mean by assets here is, let's say, building a bridge or a building or a new college. All these are cap expenditure. So, let's say. Government of India decided to build a new All India Institute of Medical Sciences. The income that's coming from taxes, that is revenue receipt. The money that goes into building of the new hospital complex, that is capital expenditure. But when they finally appoint doctors and run the hospital, the regular expenses are revenue expenditure. The regular maintenance, the salaries, etc. always come under revenue expenditure. So I hope you got the different uh, types of receipts and expenditure. So quick recap of how to read a budget document. It has information on receipts and the income and expenditure which is spending. And they are of two types, the revenue and capital. And the years available are the upcoming year budget estimates, the ongoing year budget estimates and the revised estimates, 
and the previous year actuals. Now, more on all the related terms regarding budget can be found in Open Budgets India under the section Budget Basis. So now we have a fair enough idea of what is there in the budget document. Let's come back to these questions and try to answer them. See if budget documents can give us the answer. How much budget is allocated in my district for primary education? This is not an information that we can get from any of the budget documents. Why? Because district level allocation is not available in union budget, state budget, or municipal corporation budget. But we can get the total allocation at the central level and the state level for, let's say, a scheme like Samagra Shiksha Abhyay. What about the fiscal response to the current pandemic? Do we know how government has re-estimated the income and expenditure for this year? We don't know yet because the union government has not yet released the revised estimates for this year. So we don't know. We know that Nirmala Sitaraman, Sitaraman expected to spend 31 lakh crores because we expected to earn 31 lakh crores. But because of the lockdown, our incomes have gone down and because of the pandemic, our expenditure has gone up. So we'll have to wait till the revised estimates to find out what has happened to our budget. So those two questions cannot be answered right now. What can be answered is how is Nirbhaya fund being utilized towards women's safety? So let's try to answer that. Uh, so, Nirmaya Fund was set up by the union government. So, I know that, okay, I have to go and visit the union government uh, budget website for that. So, I'm going to the union budget website. This is indiabudget.gov.in. And there are a lot of information here. How do I know where to look for? Uh, we are looking for expenditure. So, okay, there's something called expenditure budget here. I'm clicking on it. And I'm okay. I'm again going to click on expenditure budget. Let's see. And here I can see that expenditure budget has been given for each ministry and department in the Senate government. So, Nurbhaya Fund being related to women's safety. I am going to check for Ministry of Women and Child Development. So let's say, okay, Women and Child Development. I'm going to open the PDF file. So yeah, this is how a budget document looks like. This is a detailed demand for grants by the Ministry of Women and Child Development. How much money they are getting and how much they are spending. And as I have uh, explained, it has the actual figures for 2018-19, budget estimates for 2019-20, revised estimates for 2019-20, and, and budget estimates for 2020-21, along with the two kinds of expenditure. Revenue expenditure, and capital expenditure. So I am going to search for Nirbhaya. And I can find that there is an entry called Mission for Protection of Empowerment of Women. And under that, there is a line called Other Schemes Funded from Nirbhaya Fund. And if I look at it, I can see that in 2020-2021, the ministry has allocated only 80 crores for these other schemes, compared to 275 crores in the previous year. Now, 
how do i know that only women and child development ministry is using the rubaya fund i don't know i may have to go and look at ministry of railways maybe ministry of uh, mm-hmm. home affairs because police is under ministry of home affairs in uh, union territories and the national capital territory so it becomes difficult to find out where all the information is and that is where open budget india platform and union budget explorers created by cbi makes it much more easier to go through uh, all the crucial information uh, related to budgets uh, so i'm going to stop here for now if there are any questions related to the material that i presented till now please do ask um otherwise uh, upasna will take us through the two portals on how to navigate them and how we can find the information that we are looking for so if there are any questions and here yeah. thank you thank you arun if there are questions you can unmute and ask or is uh, over to you pasana um hi can everyone see me yeah hello uh yeah so should i should i wait for 2 minutes um if anybody has any questions i know it's it's quite a heavy topic uh to wrap your head around so um yeah i'm just going to give it like a minute in case anybody wants to ask questions uh okay then i guess there are no questions uh okay i'm just going to share my sorry sorry um yeah hi can everyone see my screen right now yes yes we can yeah okay great uh so uh i don't know uh, about uh, all of you but like watching arun walk through the whole process of finding a budget document looking for a specific ministry and then looking for something uh particular that you're searching for it seems kind of cumbersome to me um and it also uh prevents you from having like a holistic view of how uh spending happens uh so i know it's uh it's afternoon uh it's after lunch we've all are probably low key drowsy uh so this session is going to be uh interactive and i would love it if you all uh could ask questions along the way uh because the title of the of this session today is um building fiscal data capacity that is exactly what we will be doing in this session uh so as arun had mentioned that we have built a couple of platforms in order to make um, everyone's life a tad bit easier the first one i'm going to uh, walk you through is the union budget explorer uh so i'm going to quickly uh share the link uh if all of you are in front of your laptop uh i would love it i would encourage you in fact to like open it because it would be great if we could explore this platform together so can i get a couple of yeses in case you have already opened the website so that i can proceed you can just reply on the chat that uh, you are able to access the link okay awesome uh great so i'm also going to share my screen in case you're not able to open the website so you can just look at it uh so as you can see the first thing that you see in the home page is this budget profile it gives you sort of a an overview of how the money is flowing so now if i click on this you can see these little black dots that are moving it gives you a sense of the direction of money flow and it also has total receipts and total budgetary expenditure which was explained quite well by arun uh, just a while ago now if we scroll a bit further down uh this is almost like a highlight of the union budget where you see these yearly comparisons of revenue receipts cap- capital receipts and then total central expenditure and transfers 
to transfer their life transfers to other uh, state governments uh, for schemes, etc. And if we go further below, we see these different sections which you can use to explore both expenditure and receipts uh, by ministry, by schemes, and there's one section dedicated for receipts. Um, I realize this is a two-hour session and budget is a very complicated topic to explore, so we will be restricting uh, our... Hello? Yeah. Hi. Uh, the screen share isn't working exactly, so... Uh... Uh, sorry, you're not able to see my screen? I think we can see a screen, but just see the participants' uh, screen, not, not the union budget explorer. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Okay, hang on. Let me just uh, start presenting again. Just give me a minute. I apologize for this. How about now? Are you are you able to see it now? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah. Uh, so I okay, fine. I'll just do like a quick walkthrough. I'm pretty sure you've all heard what I was saying. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to walk you through is this budget profile, uh, which sort of gives you like a very macro view, um, like a bird's eye view, I would say, of how the money is flowing. Then you have the highlights. Uh, of the union budget and this is the section that I was talking about where you can explore expenditure by ministry, by schemes uh, and you can also explore union receipts separately. So you have two options here. So either you can click on any of these uh, buttons and it will direct you to the expenditure or the receipts and also at the top you have these various buttons where you can use uh, the expenditure receipts or schemes to explore the following data. Uh, okay, uh, does anybody have any questions uh, so far? Uh, or is everyone with me? Uh, okay, I'll take that yes. as a yes. Okay, great. Uh, cool. So now let's go ahead and start with like the ministry wise expenditure. Yeah, so if everyone can click on that ministry-wise expenditure, that would be great so that we can all come on the same page. Uh, so now you can see all of these little bubbles uh, and, if, and a little bit of text which sort of gives you the highlights of um, expenditure by various ministries and departments. Um, I'm sure you're all wondering what do these different sizes, these different colors mean. Uh, so the size of a bubble basically tells you the amount uh, that has been allocated to the particular ministry or department. Uh, for example, here, if you look at the biggest bubble, which is this light blue bubble, it says interest payments. And it also gives you the total amount that was allocated for this, which is 708,203 point something crores. And the percentage that you see, 7.23%, which is green in color, indicates that from the previous year of um, FY 2019 to 2020, there has been a 7.23% increase in the allocation. Uh, so that's about the size of the bubble. Uh, now, if you look at the colors, the orange-red colors basically indicate that there has been a decrease from the previous year. And the more blue the bubble, uh, the more has been the increment from the previous year. Uh, yeah, sorry, did anybody have a question there? I thought... Okay, okay. Uh, so here, as you can see, the uh, similar thing, uh, the biggest bubble is the interest payments. That's exactly what's been said here, that the maximum share of expenditure has been uh, by interest payments. And the maximum increase in the budget is by Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs. So if I had to look for this, then I would look for the more blue circles. And yeah, just navigating through it, I would then be able to see like this tiny dot over here, uh, which says Ministry of Parliament Affairs. And it has like a whopping like 160% increase because the small, the allocation is 50 crores. Um, I'm going to pause here for a bit if anybody has any questions. Okay, 
Uh, moving on, so if you scroll a bit further down, you'll see this table. Now, what does this table do? This table is essentially a database which has all of the information regarding expenditure by various ministries and departments. Uh, now, what's really cool about this is that because as you can see that the last entry here is the 298 page, it's a, it's a pretty big data set. Uh, and as Arun had mentioned earlier that there are three time points here, which is um, the budget and revised estimates of the ongoing year, uh, budget estimates for the upcoming year, and actuals from the previous year. Uh, so I want to go back quickly to the example that we have been um, following throughout, which is the Nirbhaya Fund. Now, if I want to see like what's going on with the Nirbhaya Fund, I can just write in the search bar Nirbhaya, and it gives me all the information regarding it. Uh, so if you all could also type Nirbhaya in your search bars, then that would be great. Uh, so now, um, as you can see over here is the Ministry of Women and Child Development, exactly the same thing that we explored when Arun was walking us through uh, the budget document. And we can see the same information over here. Uh, but, what's, um, but what's really cool about using this Union Budget Explorer is that this is a one-stop destination for all your budget inf like Union Budget information. So you don't have to separately go to law and justice uh, uh, or Ministry of Railways in order to look for specific thing, uh, because you might not even know that it exists. Like Ministry of Railways has some amount that has been met by Nirbhaya Fund and also police. So this gives you sort of a, a holistic view of what's happening with money that's in the Nirbhaya Fund. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you can check out um, all of the information related to Nirbhaya Fund. And you can also uh, use this table to sort of derive insights as to what's happening with this money exactly. So you can look at trends over here. For example, let's take Ministry of Women and Child Development. And here you see that the actual allocation was 1.94 crores in 2018-19. Uh, the budget estimate was 201 crores. The revised estimate was 275 crores, which is higher than the, um, esti the budget estimate. Uh, however, you see that the allocation, like the budget estimate for 2020 to 21, is like significantly lower from the previous year's estimates. It is just 80 crores. So one might wonder, uh, like you know, what what could have caused this. Um, decrease in allocation, like were the funds not utilized? Uh, was there a shortage of funds? Like what's going on? So this, this is something which can lead to like some kind of an exploratory um, journey and you could also use it for advocacy and things like that. Um, yeah, so any questions so far? Okay, great. I'm gonna take that as a, as a whole, no, everything's uh, clear. Uh, so I understand that the cohort today is very diverse and works in very uh, different, in, in various sectors like youth development, health, education, um, so working with people with disabilities, etc. So you can actually use the, use the search bar to look for using certain keywords uh, which can direct you to uh, the specific information that you're looking for. For example, let me just type in women's safety and it gives you some information, which as you can see also includes the NIRPAYA fund. Uh, you can use education, uh, gives information about that, disabilities, uh, yeah. So, before we move on to like expenditure by schemes, I just want to give it and just explore it. And um, it, it would be nice if you could um, use this platform to sort of look at information related to your sector. And if you, and I would love to hear back on um, what the experience was like in exploring and if you derived any insights which you thought was 
uh, interesting. Uh, so yeah, just gonna give you five minutes for that. And um, there is oh, a question. Sorry. There's a question. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. does the minus sign imply here? Uh, so the minus sign basically uh, tells you that this money has been received from uh, an autonomous fund that is uh, not really administered by that particular ministry, uh, but it's been taken from a fund that is administered by the Ministry of Finance. Uh, for example, the Nirbhaya Fund, right? So it's administered by the Department of Economic Affairs, which is under the Ministry of Finance. It's not been given to the Ministry of Women and Child Development. So the minus here indicates that the Ministry of Women and Child Development has taken, has received that exact amount of money from the Ministry of Finance. Um, yeah, and there's also, a, uh, in the table, you can also see the corresponding expenditure where it has been spent. Uh, yeah, like this was the amount that was met and the purpose was this, other schemes funded from their payout fund. I hope that clarifies uh, your query. Okay, sure. Uh, any other questions? Okay, sorry, no, I I, uh, I gave you five minutes to explore, so please, yeah, go ahead. Um, also, in the meantime, if anybody would like to uh, ask questions or just share, um, any, um, I don't know, or have any remarks about the Explorer, would love to hear it. So, Parthna, just I want to know who has developed sure. this site, Ajit, this site from Jawalpur Pradam? Uh, hi, Ajit. Yeah, so the team at CDL itself uh, developed this site from scratch. Uh, it was in partnership with uh, our partner organization, uh, CBGA, uh, okay. Center for Budget and Governance Accountability. So, yeah, this was part of like the open budgets uh, project that we have. Uh, and hence we went ahead and built this like more interactive explorer sort of a platform. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, actually, I missed the first ten, ten minute session. So it has it has not been designed by the government, right? Uh, no, it has not been designed by the government. The government uh, keeps a lot of this data out in public anyway. It's just that it's very difficult to sort of go through it. It's not very user-friendly is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so we just sort of used all of that um, already open information and uh, converted it into a format that is useful for citizens, for uh, not-for-profit organizations, civil society organizations, advocacy groups, etc. Yeah. So no credentials are required for, for accessing this site, right? Sorry? So no credentials uh, is required for accessing this site. Anyone can uh, access this site. Yeah, yeah, anybody can. Any, okay. Anyone who has internet can access the site, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So Prasanna, I have a question. Yes, please. I have a question. Uh, yeah. does, it look, does it look for an exact match of uh, whatever you enter or it gives some approximate nearest uh, match? So I think uh, is there something specific that you were searching for and you were uh, not in? because I think there are some words which um, if you type in it may not give you the exact uh, like the result but you could try using similar words. Um, okay. Yeah. Is, is there something yeah. specific that you were looking for and were not able to find? I can help you with it. No, no. I, I just I just typed in midday meal. Uh huh. 
and then you know does it is it sensitive to you know whether you use lower case upper case a mid uh, half and day etc yeah yeah no 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 it will it will get you that it's not the case sensitive or like about spaces and stuff yeah okay okay thank you sure uh great thank you for your question um would anyone like to just volunteer yourself and uh talk about how it was like exploring uh the platform uh i mean we would also use this as an opportunity to get feedback in all honesty um uh, so yeah happy to hear what it was like anyone any thoughts uh upasana one thing is coming in my mind mm -hmm. how did you gather this information i mean we all must be very confidential so how did you gather this information to develop this site uh, hello uh, uh, uh confidential in what sense ajit like um i'm just trying to understand yeah budget related uh, stuff i uh, uh, uh yeah so that's the uh that's the thing that this that none of this is confidential uh the government um during the budget like when it like presents the budget and the budget speeches it also makes it available um on their websites uh so yeah uh you just have to go to their website and you can look at all of this information none of this is uh behind closed doors everything is out um and available yeah for the public okay. yeah it's just that it's inaccessible that's that's a, that's the problem we're trying to solve uh but yeah it's it's openly available okay uh okay great if nobody has any further questions in the interest of time i will just go ahead and move forward and please please do type in uh your questions in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them so i'm not going to spend too much time but i will quickly walk through this section of schemes in the union budget explorer uh yeah so here similar uh the bubble visualization for all of the major schemes uh and if you click on this button types of schemes it again um divides all of these schemes into three major categories Uh, the one you see here on the left are the core schemes, which are basically centrally sponsored schemes, and both the states and the center have to fund these schemes. Ah, uh, then comes core of the core schemes, which are essentially same as core uh, core schemes. That is, they are centrally sponsored schemes funded by both center and state. Ah, uh, however, these are ah uh, directed particularly towards social protection and social inclusion. And then ah uh, this. um third section at the bottom you see our major central schemes uh the only difference is that these are funded entirely by the center and um are implemented by the states but states don't fund mm -hmm. it uh so very similar a uh, process to what we saw by um ministry wise expenditure if you go further down uh you can look at all of the you have this huge database of all of the schemes and if the, if you're looking for like a particular scheme then you can just go ahead and look for it in the search bar uh, so i'm not going to spend too much time on it again going to leave it for you to explore uh yeah okay great so now i'm going to quickly so now that we have the union budget explorer we also developed a state budget explorer because uh we all know that union budget gets a lot of coverage even during budget season but uh state budgets hardly get that kind of attention and notice uh, even though in the uh, the 14 finance commission recommendation stated that uh states would uh have uh, like states would be getting almost 42% of the union taxes so it becomes incredibly important for us to also scrutinize state budgets so we at cdl built uh the state budget explorer for the state of assam and i'm going to quickly share the link oh sorry thank you all for sharing the link uh great 
So as you can see, um, it's it's very similar in terms of structure to our Union Budgets platform, where on the home page you have the budget profile, and you can see the sort of money flowing and the direction of money flow, and this gives you the highlight of uh, expenditure allocations and the receipts. Uh, here we have budget um, highlights of the expenditure and receipts. Again, not going to go further into this. Uh, here I'm going to focus more on uh, the expenditure as we did in the Union Budget Explorer as well. Um, so yes, so I'm going to click on this. If all of you could also go to the expenditure section of um, the Assam uh, Budget Explorer, that would be, uh, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Great. So here you have um, these different bubbles, which are, which follow the same uh, logic in terms of visual, visualization of the size indicates the amount, um, blue indicates an increment, orange, red in, indicates um, a decrement, and uh, the darker the shade, uh, the more has been the increment or the decrement. Great. Um, so if you're, so now you have all these different grants, right, over here. So a lot of these different departments um, in the state government, they all have certain demands for where they want money, uh, where they need money in order to implement the project or in order to just uh, have their daily operations. And so they ask for these grants. And so that's what we're going to explore over here is the budget allocation according to grants. So here on top, so this is a total list of uh, all the grants uh, and you can search for something specific that you're looking for like let's say for okay there's nothing related to women let's see health okay yeah so you have a grant related to health um okay so now i'm going to go to the topmost bar where you have this home budget highlights expenditure and here there is a drop down which says summary and all grants so the page you're currently looking at is the summary page and I want you all to go ahead and click the All Grants button. Uh, yeah, can, can I get a quick yes on whether you're all on the Grants page for the Assam State Budget Explorer? Okay, yeah, awesome. Great, so now uh, let's look at Okay, so we were looking, we were exploring the uh, Nirbhaya fund, right, in our previous example. So I am going to look at one very specific grant, which is the transport services. So I'm going to click on grant number nine. Yeah. So here it gives you um, a sort of summary of this grant where it tells you what were the actuals of 2018-2019, uh, the budget and revised estimates for 2019 and 20, and then the budget estimate for 2020 to 21. And here it tells you that um, compared to the previous year, uh, there has been a decrement of 11.6% in terms of the allocation. Uh, great. So if you scroll further down, here you see this bar graph, right? It gives you a breakup uh, of how this money has been allocated uh, for transport services between these various uh, major heads. And if you scroll further down, you get this entire breakup, like a very detailed uh, granular breakup uh, of how this money has been al uh, allocated, which you can explore moving on. Um, and similarly, you can use the search button over here as well. So now oh, let's click on road transport. So if I click on the bar graph for road transport, uh, it gives me null. Now you're all wondering what this null is, right? It seems like an error. So the reason this null is showing up is because if you scroll down over here, you can see that the head descriptions have been given as null. So because the budget document has, this, um, has not detailed out the description for this, uh, that's why it's showing the null um, 
label over here. However, if I further click on this bar, I get a breakup of how the road transport allocation has been divided. Um, so let's see assistance to public sector and other undertakings, just uh, direction and administration, other expenditure and research. So let's see what other expenditure it has, right? So in other expenditure, you see that the that a large chunk of the allocation has been for women's safety and security in public transportation ecosystem. So it just uh, so yeah so kind of um, related to our Nirbhaya fund thing um, is that over here you can look at um, the breakup of every grant and the allocation and where the money has been spent and. If you look at it, um, if you if you hover the cursor over the bar, you can see the exact amount, which is 13.8 crores uh, for the year 2020 to 21. The allocation for women safety and security in public transportation has been 13.8 um, crores. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of how uh, you can use the Assam Budget um, Explorer for a very specific. Um, grant-wise um, budget allocation um, to look at expenditure of certain things. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to, uh, yeah, so I would leave this Assam Budget Explorer also with all of you to explore. And with that, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Gaurav, who will be um, having a sort of conversation with one of the partners uh, who have actually used our platforms uh, for their work. Uh, thanks everyone for participating and over to you, Gaurav. Uh, thanks, Upasana. This is super helpful. Uh, I would now like to invite Anubhav from Studio Nilema. So Studio Nilema is a, a research nonprofit page out of Assam, Guwahati. And uh, they have been working on uh, understanding the state of correctional homes in Assam. And they've recently used our platform for multiple purposes. And I would like Anubhav to come and uh, speak a bit about how his experience has been on the platform. Um, and then we can deep dive into some of the use cases they have worked on. Anubhav, if you can. Yeah. Hi, Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Gaurav, for this opportunity. And I'd also like to thank uh, Tech for Good. Uh, thank you for organizing this. Uh, so, like Gaurav said, uh, we are basically a collective of uh, practitioners, lawyers, and scholars based out of Guwahati and Assam. And uh, we work in the intersections of uh, law, justice, and governance. And uh, we have been working with Assam's Correctional Board since 2017 through Pratidhwani, which is our free legal services and awareness initiative. Uh, now, uh, when we began working in 2017, uh, so one of the stands of the government of Assam at that point was that uh, there were sufficient funds for prisons. And uh, in fact, it had taken the stand in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, we knew from our field experiences and uh, also audit documents uh, from the CAG that uh, this was not the case. Uh, in fact, there was a serious lack of funds for the jail electorate. So when uh, the government of Assam called for suggestions for the budget 2019-20, uh, we had the benefit of the Assam Budget Explorer, which had been facilitated by uh, CDL. And uh, just deep diving into some of the issues that we had already noticed through our field experiences, through the lens of the Budget Explorer, uh, it told us something very important, which was that uh, in areas where we knew there was policy paralysis, there is also a corresponding mismatch or a lack of budget allocation. So, with this information, we formulated a draft scheme and uh, we addressed issues such as promoting entrepreneurship among inmates, addressing capacity building of jail staff themselves, and in fact, improving their living conditions and service conditions along with the prison infrastructure. So these areas had uh, unfortunately been uh, silent in the traditional policy discourse around correctional homes till then. And uh, I think the Budget Explorer really helped us uh, look at these issues uh, in a much more uh, holistic way. And also, uh, just to talk about health infrastructure here, uh, from the data we had already gathered through RTI and litigation, uh, 
uh, when you help infrastructure with a serious challenge in Assam. And in fact, there has been a series of unnatural deaths uh, relating to uh, unnatural uh, relating to health infrastructure in Assam's correctional wards. And uh, there was also the issue with nutrition because uh, what had happened was that the diet chart available to inmates was from 1896, and it had not been changed substantially till uh, only a few years ago. And while it had been changed, the quality of the food did not improve. So. Along with this data on health infrastructure and diet, we then began tracking data on kinds of illnesses that have been prevalent, and soon patterns began emerging. For example, there was a high prevalence of gastrointestinal diseases. There was high incidence of infectious diseases. Uh, so, with this information, then again we went back to the budget explorer, which told us that from 2015 onwards, there had been this uh, recurrent pattern of under budgeting when it comes to diet. Now, information and insights of this nature really help us build effective arguments, whether in court or even through our advocacy uh, efforts uh, with the department. And then this then again in, informs their policy uh, decisions. Uh, noting how crucial open data and even tools such as the Budget Explorer has been in our efforts, uh, so we have collaborated with CDL uh, to create this correctional index for the state of Assam. And uh, what we hope to do through this is uh, really document key indicators such as general infrastructure, health facilities across correctional homes in Assam. Uh, this will really help us, uh, you know, bring data from the northeast, which has uh, been a blur uh, when it comes to mainstream access to justice reports, and uh, drive policy reforms more effectively on the national scale, and also maybe share best practices uh, from Assam. To other states, and then have this exchange of ideas, which uh, is really crucial in the access to justice space. Yeah, so that's uh, been our broad uh, learnings as regards open data, and uh, yeah, we look forward to working more in the space. Thanks a lot, Anubha. Uh, could you also briefly talk about the challenges you face with the data in a state like Assam, um, because? Always, we keep hearing that there is a lot of public information out there. We can access it uh, by filing RTIs. I know you have been filing a lot of RTIs lately. Um, what are the kind of challenges you face once you receive that information back uh, from RTI? Great, great. Uh, so, uh, one thing with the RTI, at least in Assam, is that uh, we don't have the online option available as yet. Uh, so that of course creates an additional hurdle because then we again have to digitize this and also you know record and analyze it. So uh, that is the first hurdle when it comes to organizing data. And secondly, also uh, just analyzing data because we have, uh, for example, 30 correctional homes across the state. And uh, when the information flows in, it really creates uh, uh, without specialized inputs as to how to organize this data. It really becomes difficult to organize it. So I think uh, while we have been trying to build capacity to organize and uh, use this data in a better way, I think uh, we also need to look at uh, options such as uh, sharing the data we have with us so that maybe uh, uh, other uh, stakeholders in this field who maybe have that expertise uh, could draw insights from the data and uh, just take the cause of justice forward in a more effective way. Thanks. Thanks, Anubha. Uh, I would now open floor if we have any other questions for Anubhav on the work they have been doing at Student Elema on uh, correction homes in Assam or how they are using budget data for, for advocacy. Floor is open for you. I would take that as no. Uh, so thanks a lot, Anubha, for joining us today uh, and sharing your work with us. This was super insightful. And we hope to continue partnering with you, helping you in whatever way possible to build your data and technology capacity to better use the kind of data which is out there and help you deal with the data which you are gathering now using RTI and other forms. So looking forward to collaborate further with you and having this Absolutely right. Thank you. Thanks so much.
Anubhav, feel free to share some of the reports or some of the work you have done in the chat for other participants to go through. And I'm sure they will find it really helpful. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank uh, over to you, Vatsna. Do you want to touch base again with the participants if, if they're having any trouble exploring the Assam Bulk Explorer? Uh, sure, yeah, thanks, Gaurav. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I realized that I didn't uh, spend a lot of time uh, doing the exploratory uh, session like I did with the Union Budget Explorer. So, yeah, let's take this time to just sort of uh, see what's, what we can do with the Assam Budget Explorer. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. So if you all have the link, um, yeah, I would just say take uh, maybe five minutes to uh, go through the, yeah, go through the Explorer. I'm just resending the link. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so please uh, feel free to take a couple of minutes to uh, explore. And if you have any questions, we're all here to answer them. Also, like if, in case you want us to look into some of uh, these queries on your behalf, we can quickly uh, do a demo for, for the queries or for the sections you are working on, kind of sectors you are working on. We can do a few queries live with you. Uh, there is a question by Arith, uh, how are these services of serial price, if at all? Uh, I might have missed that earlier. So thanks a lot, Arith. Uh, what we do is more, more in terms of partnerships. So uh, you can consider us as in the traditional sense of consultancy form. So uh, we, we do start with a free consultation to begin with. And we work with you to scope the problems you're working on and understand what data can uh, play a role like. And uh, depending on uh, the kind of work we have uh, and depending the kind of data we are trying to target, we then uh, understand how many people from our team would be required to work with you. And accordingly, we price either we, uh, either we go to a funder together, fill a joint grant, or we uh, work with you to figure out how do we, you know, uh, do we pay our staff with we collaborate? So those are a couple of ways with which we elaborate, but it all depends on the kind of scope we are targeting, kind of data we are targeting, and the amount of time it would take to create a tool like this. And as Arun has mentioned in the chat, feel free to uh, book a free consultation with our team. Uh, a small uh, form there. Just quickly fill your details and we would schedule shortly a consultation that you understand the kind of work you're doing and explore how we can help. Great. So I think. Uh, Pasna, meanwhile, people explore, maybe we can do one or two more walkthroughs together. So do you mind sharing your screen? Uh, sure, got it. yeah. Yeah, uh, can everyone see my screen right now? I've shared the Assam budget. Yes, we can. So maybe we look into, say, another segment. Uh, maybe we look into, uh, say, health in, in SF. Yeah. We have a grant number 29, medical and public health. Yeah. So this gives you sort of, uh, so the table here gives you um, an overview there you see, you guys, you can see that on actuals 2018-2019, they spent about uh, 4,365 crores. 
And we can see that the budget estimate for 2019 to 20 was higher, uh, which is um, 6,684 crores. And then we see that the revised estimate was still higher than the budget estimate. Uh, but what's concerning is that the budget estimate for 2020 to 21 um, has been lower than, in fact, the budget estimate for 2019 to 20. Uh, so so this, since this is just the summary page, let's begin further deep dive. Uh, uh, sorry, I, yeah. I forgot the number of the... 29. Yeah, yeah but this drop down is helpful. Uh, also, your help will go out for that. Uh, great. So, yeah, similar insight that we had uh, drawn um, from the table is that there is actually a decrease, and this tells you that there's a 3.3% decrease. Uh, yeah, and now we have the breakup. Um, also, does anybody have... Uh, Anything specific you want to explore in this um, allocation? Like, do you want to explore sanitation, family welfare? And we can take your suggestions and then, um, yeah, go ahead and explore. Any any preferences? So I'm not sure about Anubha, but every time I visit Guwahati, there are a lot of mosquitoes, uh, and I'm not sure how Anubha feels with it, but. Uh, my, my worry is whether I would have uh, malaria or not if I go there. I would like to hear uh, in the budget uh, document, see how the government is you know, spending money on malaria control in, in SM. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Gaurav. So here, I can, um, as a citizen, I would see two things that would concern me. One is the allocation for medical and public health. And I guess because it's malaria specifically, I would also look at water supply and sanitation. Um, so yeah, just going to medical and public health. Uh, I can see that these are all the different services uh, that are available. Let's say because it's Guwahati, urban health services. Um, I think I think it would be in um, in, in public health. You go back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just skipped a little ahead. Uh, 29. So I just used the data table uh, below and searched for malaria. So that's where I, I oh. find the thing. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I think for me also as a personal interest because it's so holistic, right? Like I would also like to see if they're spending on like sanitation and things like that to make sure that mm -hmm. there are no open gutters and that there's clean water everywhere. So yeah, I think that would also be like an interesting space to explore for budget allocation. Okay, great. Um, any anything else that anybody would like to explore, either in the Assam budget or the Union budget, specific to your sector or your area of work. So I think Sashida so has a question. Um, on is there any documented guides you explore information or explore or is it self-exploratory? So as of now it's self-exploratory, but you're also making some videos, Sashida, which would help you navigate the way we are used to navigating some of these tools. Um, uh, and and then you know explore the data the way you want. There's another question by Subramanya Sevakumar. Uh, on municipal level, we have some data out there. I think Arun can share the data, uh, the link of data for municipal 
budgets or you uh, fixed stock. Uh, unfortunately, we are not getting enough funding to you know, keep updating the municipal budget data and also it's very tedious work because most of the municipal budget data comes in a, uh, in a local language. So we are figuring it out. While we figure it out, we can still use whatever data we have uploaded on municipal budget. We have 61 municipal corporations covered there. But data might not be recent. That's my only uh, tip there. Next, we have uh, Skanda saying, uh, could you share a few more examples of tools built for partners like these, just to understand the possibilities? Uh, Opasan, do you want to quickly uh, show HP Fiscal Data Explorer as well? HP dot open by India dot yeah. Skanda, that's another tool which we have recently built. It's still in uh, uh, sort of an alpha state uh, for people to uh, access and explore. Um, it's much more deeper, as Arun was mentioning before, like all your understanding sticks only on the state level. But here we are looking beyond budget, we are looking into daily spending data coming from different district treasuries. And we have put together all that information here for you to explore. We are also looking into how Himachal is spending on COVID. We are looking into procurement, we are looking into different aspects. So please uh, explore this tool. That's a recent detailed tool which we have built. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Pratikshya has asked for the link, I think that. Yeah. Those are the questions we have. So before we do further tool exploration, I would take five minutes more and request to Pasta to quickly uh, explain how we go about building the data strategy. So, Basma, if you can share back the slides again. Um, sure, sure. Um, can you all see? Yeah, we can see the slides. Slide number 25. So, so as you can see, uh, here's a way in which you can collaborate with us. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, Asna, slide number 26. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah. Can you all see the next slide? Uh, no, I think the presentation is not coming, Asna. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm You're still on the other side. No worries. No worries at all. I think this is also helpful. This is, this is still readable, so it shouldn't be a problem. So uh, I think here we uh, work mostly. Uh, so what we help most of our partners is thinking the data collection aspect, exploring how you can collect data, uh, how you can work with this data in, in different ways. Uh, what are the fields you need to be careful about, privacy of the individuals, uh, security and so on. So we come on the data collection level and help you plan things, help you suggest tools which you can use. Most of them are open source, so you don't need to pay extra cost for managing the technology and other stuff. Second one is data storage. Once you start collecting some data on ground, how do you uh, manage your storage? How do you store it in a way that you can quickly analyze it across years, across geographies, uh, across different segments in an easy, easy format? Uh, and once you figure out the storage, once it's easy to work with, we dive into data analysis. So we have uh, built a lot of exploratory data analysis tools. Uh, some of these you saw here, which are related to budget, but we have few uh, tools which are slightly more generic. We have few tools which we customize based on the kind of uh, work we do. So these data analysis tools, these exploratory data analysis tools, help you identify different patterns. The way Anubhav was, was saying that uh, once he started to look into data, he started to see patterns that excited him more towards finding 
the causal relationship of those patterns. So it helps us generate more insights from the data we have and sometimes help us collect and marry this data with other data sets out there. And once you're done with the data analysis phase, the last thing which we help with is data visualization or data storytelling. Uh, once you have collected this data, once you have found your pattern, how do you present this use case for your target population? Be it the government stakeholders, be it working with the media houses to write a data story, be it uh, working on ground and uh, informing the citizens on how this data is affecting them and so on. So these are the uh, four step process of data strategy uh, we work on. So uh, feel free to reach out to us if, if that's uh, something you would like to do with, with, with the kind of sector you're working in, with the kind of problems you work in. Uh, so Open Words India would remain an open data platform for you to you know, use the data, uh, reuse it for all the purpose. It's completely free and open source and we're working really hard that it remains so. Uh, for anything else beyond, you know, uh, beyond the data you can access there, if you want to uh, go into a specific state for which you don't see enough data there, if you want to reach out to us to do specific analysis, or if you want to just in general catch up with us, understand how data can play a major role, the kind of uh, mission you are, you are charting yourself into, uh, feel free to book a we one hour uh, data strategy consultation with us. Here's the link Arun has already shared uh, in, in the chat as well for you. So that that sums up our data strategy work and we look forward to uh, you know, hearing from you. Uh, just a side note on other things which we do. So in, in fiscal data space, we already have the uh, union build explorers, state explorers, we have shown briefly how, how it works for SM. Bas um, also shared the link for Himachal. Himachal one is much more detailed, much more timely, uh, and slightly more complex. So that's why we didn't want to do the demo of it for the introductory session, but that's there. We are also working to create more district and sector dashboards. So these would focus on different uh, sectors like health, um, water, sanitation, uh, safety, so on. So we are going to work on those in coming years to come. Uh, and we would try to expand coverage of it beyond um, certain states and make it pan India as much as possible. Uh, we are also working on creating some of these libraries and visualization tools in an open manner so that anyone can use it. And with help of any technology uh, help, you can replicate this for your own purposes. And gradually we are moving from public finance to other sectors as well. We recently started to work in law and justice as well, where we are building a similar platform like Open Bridge India, something called as Justice Hub. This hub is a, is a centralized place for anyone who is working in the space of law and justice to share their legal data, legal resources at one place. So the launch of the hub is uh, scheduled early for next year. And uh, we already have the platform ready. We already have received a lot of data contributions. So in case you're working in this space, we would be really happy to schedule a, gen schedule a, a call with you. Uh, Anubhav and his team at Student Dilemma is also one of the contributors to Justice Hub. They have signed pledge to continue to publish your work in open. Um, and this whole initiative we are doing in partnership with Agami. Uh, and and there are other experiments on uh, which we are doing with other small or mid-level legal research organizations. Like we are doing a detailed FOXO case study. FOXO is protection of children against sexual offenses. A case study of uh, how the cases of uh, uh, cases against children uh, cases uh, of children sexual offenses exist in India and uh, especially in lower tiers of judiciary. And this is what we are doing with the partnership with HUC. Uh, we are also looking into how different uh, zombie cases exist of IP Act. Uh, so these are the cases which are declared unconstitutional by Supreme Court, but you see still arrests happening in, in lower courts on, on those cases with Internet Freedom Foundation. Uh, we are doing this study. 
So similarly, we're partnering with more organizations to look into how uh, the law uh, and, and judiciary related implementations are happening on ground. And lastly, the third sector which we have begun exploring is the urban development, or we are calling it as better cities, where we are looking into crisis reporting on, on an urban level and building again an open data platform for anyone to access uh, this, this data, which is crucial to uh, several urban issues in an open manner in partnership with Urbani Foundation, the organization behind uh, a popular uh, media house known as Citizen Matters, uh, who covers local issues across India, local urban issues. So that's like a long um, and broad introduction of the kind of work which is happening at Survey Data Lab. Um, so three sectors, public finance, law and justice, and urban development, where we have much more strategic focus. But don't worry, if you're working with data, if you're working with technology, you can always reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to um, help you scope things, help you explore the right tools, help you build a data strategy, and more than happy to collaborate, co-create. Thank you, Gaurav. Any questions, uh, anyone? Any doubts? Great. Thank you, Gaurav, Arpit, uh, Arun, and Upasana for introducing the Tech for Good Unity to your incredible work at Civic Data Labs. Really appreciate your time, energy, and constant support. Uh, thank you also to Anubhav for sharing your experience and learning, and thank you all nonprofits who joined in today. Our uh, next session is uh, led by the Datagram team, which is next Wednesday, same time. Datagram helps you build your own data collection form to gather free data using mobile phones, tablets, or laptops, both online and offline. You will receive a session invites from me on Monday. Thank you once again. Until then, stay safe, everyone, and see you at the next spotlight. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.